Good afternoon. It has been a whirlwind of a day. Not only has it been rainy and then sunny and cold and then warm, but it's also been very productive. So this Saturday, we do have a work bee here at the Shoe Shop Community Teaching Garden. From nine till 12 has always been our normal times. Uh, hopefully it won't be too chilly in the morning, but nine to 12 up here. And this week we're gonna have, El Marie is gonna help uh, with permaculture questions and answers. Uh, if you are interested in some of the techniques that she's using, I mean, she's planting right into the ground. She's doing a double dug method. She's cleared area. She's using mulching and everything like that. So you can learn a lot on how to just simply take a plot of your, of your own space, your own land, and how can you convert it into a very productive garden? So permaculture, questions and answers, and a work bee. You know, a little tour around this garden. The raspberries are coming along nicely. We are gonna have to look at starting to mow, which we have the lawnmower, thanks to Rick. And we're gonna be planting potatoes in that row. So that needs to get finished. We planted just a small portion, but the rest of it just needs to be dug out. And we need to plant more potatoes, which we had a donation of some seed potatoes. So that's really helpful. And as we go through the garden here, this area last year was a lot of squash and this year we're actually planting most of our root crops. So we've got already some, uh, you'll see some signs here. We, we are really trying to intensively plant this year. So we're, we're planting on both sides of the drip line. You do have to be careful where you're stepping. So it's a very narrow little track that we're giving ourselves to be able to work in, but that's okay, we're gonna do it. So we have carrots already planted. Um, I've just moved a lot of the wood chips off the drip lines, getting these, we're gonna get these ready to plant parsnips and then more carrots. So this will be our root crops. You can see the garlic is coming along really nicely thanks to lots of compost. We have an area here that needs to be cleaned up still. So this can be weeded. And then we are gonna need to have some compost added because this is going to host some of our kale and, and Swiss chard and it's, you know, those things can use quite a little, a bit of, of food, they need food. And so as you can see right here, last week we cleared it, it was really tidy, no weeds. And then this, uh, just today, um, we put a really heavy layer of compost from our compost pile because we are going to plant brassicas. So broccoli and cauliflower and more cabbage, and those are heavy feeders. This area here is kind of just waiting uh, for the squash plants, which will have to go in, you know, later. It's just been too cold. So we're just gonna keep letting these plants grow. Uh, when we are ready to plant, we will add compost to the planting hole. There's not a lot of point in planting or adding compost here because we don't need to feed the weeds. So we will wait and we'll let them just trail out roots. We've got our garlic and then once the garlic is done, we'll plant with probably some more broccoli and cauliflower. We're gonna be planting those greens, like we said. And here we already have beets planted. And so we're using these sticks and stakes to sort of show you where they are in the line. So you can see we're planting on both sides of the drip line, but it gives us a very small track. So realistically, there's not a lot of reason to go in here right now uh, we just need these beets and these plants to grow. Today, we also transplanted a lot of little onions. So thanks to Sue, she's been starting our seeds for us and starting these plants. So we've just planted uh, yellow globe onions and then we planted uh, walla walla and leeks. And we've got two more rows ready. We're gonna finish up with more walla walla onions. We didn't have quite enough to finish. So we've got all of these onions. Here we're planting peas for now. And then this area that's sort of just waiting as well is going to be cucumbers. So we're gonna allow things, we're not gonna use as many trellises, but we're gonna allow the cucumbers to sprawl. And then in this sort of front area, we'll plant some smaller crops. So these drip lines we have planned, we're gonna do a few rows of potatoes in here. As you'll remember, we have a lot of potato beetles, so we're not planting as many potatoes now in the garden this year, and certainly not a large section. We're gonna do some rutabaga, our winter turnip. We've got the celery transplants that are looking really nice. And we're gonna do some more lettuces. We've got lettuce uh, germinating here. We're gonna plant some kohlrabi. We're gonna, we need to get some seedlings going. And then 
um, a little bit more cabbage. We have a few cabbage seedlings going. And this whole area here, we've got three drip lines devoted to peppers. So peppers, we have labeled everything. This area here is gonna be devoted to a lot of more of the beans and lettuce. Right now we've got peas, but we're going to be transplanting or doing beans and pole beans and lettuce. And we have devoted a very large section from here on all the way over to the strawberries. We're gonna grow a lot of tomatoes, not only to give to the food banks, but we also wanna make tomato sauces and salsas and things like that for our, our meal programs. So in here, we're gonna do some leeks and more. We're gonna do some collards and carrots. We've already planted some spinach. So if you see a steak and it has a date on it, it means it has been planted. And now we just watch for germination. If it's not germinating in the time frame that we would expect, at least a week, if we're not seeing anything, we might have to consider that we need to get more seeds. So we have it all planned now. Most things are labeled. If it doesn't have a date, it hasn't been planted yet. And we are waiting. It's just been touch too cold. And we would rather let our seeds and seedlings get bigger and stronger before we plant them in the garden. We got rid of quite a few strawberry. We got rid of three rows of strawberries. They're not a very successful crop for us and they're probably a little bit more work than are needed for providing to the food banks. So we've reduced them down as so we've got three more rows that we can open up. And everything else is, is growing nicely. The irises will be up soon. The herb spiral is doing well. The compost pile is really getting down. And then this area here, we're looking to work into a flower garden, pollinators and just for beauty, decorate the front space. If you have some plants that you could divide, some nice flower plants that you'd be willing to bring up here, that'd be great. Whether they're, well, they'd be perennial if you're digging them up, but we're planting potatoes. We got these filled with soil. I'm just covering it with a bit of wood chips just to keep the cardboard down. And uh, we're gonna try potatoes in these, in these planter boxes. And then this one here, we're gonna do as a salad planter again. So it's looking great. We've got grass using the beautiful Rhymer soil. We'll have flowers. It's gonna look amazing. So that's the tour of the garden. We would really love to see some more hands up here this weekend. We have more onions to plant. We have broccoli to plant, uh, tra seedlings. Uh, rows to get ready, parsnip seeds to plant, and um, and more. We can always find lots more, right? And then stay tuned. We're gonna have. We're gonna be. We need to have a really big planting party, probably beginning of June too, because we're gonna wait till after the May long weekend. So I hope you made it to the end. Let's see you this weekend, Saturday, uh, nine to twelve for the work bee at the Shoe Shop Community Teaching Garden.